Hello Stampers, Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Thanks so much for joining me today for my, wait, what? Tip video. I am going to start a little series about window sheets. And window sheets are the clear acetate sheets that you use to make a variety of things in stamping. So one of the things that we think about most frequently is shaker cards. So I'm going to show you a couple different variations on shaker cards and next week I'll have a whole new video using the window sheets in a different way. I love the versatility of a product where you can use it so many different ways and I can't wait to share that with you. So let's get started and I'll show you the difference between these two cutie pies. This first shaker card is for Molly. Molly is my granddaughter by marriage. I always say that because everybody goes, you don't look old enough to have a grandchild. Well, I actually am. But this is my stepdaughter, Anna's little girl, and we just adore her. As a matter of fact, my husband was babysitting her today. So this card I made for Molly, and Molly's going to be turning seven on her next birthday. So I kind of chose um, a little hodgepodge of things here, and I'll show you what I used. First of all, for this one, I used the Celebration Time stamp set and the matching Celebration Thinlets. I have featured um, this bundle in some of my Friday videos. I absolutely love this bundle. There's so much fun to be made here. What I chose was the tag framelit, and there's a couple, there's three different tags in this particular bundle. So I chose this one for my card and then I pulled out the large numbers so since Molly was turning seven I chose the number seven but you can do any combination of numbers here for your shaker card so I've already die cut my little tag here and then I need to die cut a number seven so I just laid that right in the middle here and through the magic of television Here's my number seven, so I've die cut that out. Maybe I'll save this for something else later. And then you need a piece of window sheet that is slightly larger than the area that you need to cover, and also a piece of cardstock. It can be white, it can be um, designer series paper, but that's going to cover up the back there. So what you do once you have your design cut out is it's great to have a tape runner. I'm going to use some snail adhesive here because this works really good. And make sure if you have any pieces of cardstock that jet up like this that you add some of that adhesive to those pieces because your, your shaker will just go together better. Hang on just a second. There we go. And then I'm going to take and put my window sheet over the window of the number seven. Now make sure when you're doing these, lots of times we get wrapped up in adding the foam adhesive strips and we forget this part and then you get all done with your foam adhesive strip and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have the window sheet on there. So make sure you're watching that. Foam adhesive strips come in these long packs and these are fabulous. You get a whole bunch of them in a pack. I have cut some for some certain projects that I was making, so I'm just gonna use some of my bits and pieces here. But I certainly could use one long one. And you want to keep the foam adhesive tape away from your window image that's cut out because when you look at the right side, you don't want to be seeing white tape in there, right? And I'm going to just bend this around exactly how I need it to go. I'm going to use my scissors here. Cut that off. And grab another piece and we're just going to butt that up against this one because we don't want our little shaker pieces getting out. And again, I'm being very careful to stay a little distance away from my window image and I came up just a tad short. Like I said, you could use one whole piece there and that would work perfect. But you just want to make sure that if you are using bits and pieces that they're butting up against each other so our shaker pieces can't sneak out of there. Next I'm going to pull the backing off. And I do this first rather than put my little um, 
embellishments inside the shaker because you'll notice when I did that this bounces around a little bit and they could bounce out and get stuck all over the foam adhesive strip. Now I need to find my embellishments and I don't know what I did with them. Here they are. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to take some of these. You want to make sure you're not putting them on the adhesive strip. So you want to be real careful. And you also don't need a ton of them. So be mindful of that. You don't want to fill this up because you need to have room for it to shake. And by the way, these are the sprinkles embellishments. These are just the sweetest little embellishments. I love the colors of them. Now I'm going to come in with that little piece of white scrap and I am going to cover up my shaker area. Isn't that just the sweetest? And it's so easy, right? I love this. And I love that my little pieces can get stuck up here in that part of the seven, too. So that's why I didn't just go around the whole outside. I want some to be stuck up in there. So I think that's a great idea. So let me tell you a little bit more about this card. I use the work of art with the chevron design in Flirty Flamingo, So Saffron, and Peekaboo Peach. And this balloon that's right here, I've got a little scrap here so I can show you just how I made that. I've got Peekaboo Peach as my scrap and I'm using Flirty Flamingo ink. So I just brought this little cake from the celebration time in here and I stamped it back to back like this. And then I brought in my balloon punch and I put that right in here in the middle of that cake so I can get that cute little design on there and that's where you're gonna see that's coming from right there. The personalization here with the name Molly, I use this labeler alphabet set. You have these blocked letters and you also have regular letters that aren't blocked. You've got numbers and all kinds of symbols here too. So this is just kind of a go-to when I wanna personalize stuff. I love the stamp set. And where's that look who's turning coming from? That's from the number of years stamp set, the look who's turning. There's all kinds of great things in here for personalizing cards also. So like I said, I kind of have a hodgepodge of all different products here to make this cute little card. And this is just a personalized window using a number. Let's take a look at the inside of my card. Isn't this adorable? I just love the way this turned out. So inside the celebration time, you've got this little hat with the little pom-pom flower on the top. Let me show you. This confetti piece right here, I just put it on my white layer and I ran it through the big shot so that it would leave color underneath. And then this is just another stamp and die from the celebration time. So that's how I made this card. And don't let me forget the crinkled ribbon here and I've got Peekaboo Peach striped Baker's Twine. This card is everything about Stampin' Up! that I love. All the color coordinating. You don't have to work so hard to make everything match. We have Baker's Twine and ribbon and embellishments to match the cardstock and the inks. It's, it's a win-win every time. I think that's one of the reasons why I love Stampin' Up! Okay, let's move on to the next card here. This is a super fun card. And I used the Sweetheart Embossing Folder in the background. And I wanted you to kind of take a look at this so you think about things a little differently. Some people might go, oh, it's a heart in there. I don't make lots of Valentine cards. Well, you can clearly see that I've done something very different here not Valentine with this embossing folder and I love the images of this. So keep that in mind when you have um, somewhat of a, I want to call it a cutout, but an image in the middle of an embossing folder. It doesn't have to be about that all the time. Now this particular shaker card is just cut out of the front of a piece of cardstock versus having one mounted up on a little tag like this. And I'm going to bring in that piece that I embossed with the Sweetheart embossing folder and show you that you can use one of your layering circle framelits and you can simply cut this out in the big shot to get the image you need here for this type of shaker card. Hang on a second, I'm gonna cut this out. And here we go. 
no more heart. It's just a circle cut out, right? Now again, I'm going to bring in my window sheet on the back of my layer. I like using the snail adhesive to glue these pieces on because it sticks really good to the window sheets, whereas glue probably not as well. And I'm going to adhere that here. And this time I'm going to grab one of my bigger strips of foam adhesive tape. And I'm going to put the number for this product up on the screen because this is the easiest way to make shaker cards. Like It takes almost all the work out of it for you. Now another way you can make shaker cards, if you want to make these like right away today, Kelly, and you don't, you haven't ordered any of this yet, you can also use the edges of your dimensional sheets. So don't throw these away, they're great for this too. And I need just a little bit more here. Again, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm butting this up against the tape that I have here so my little pieces won't escape. Okay. Remember, I like to remove this backing before I put my shaker pieces in. Now, I put some chevron from that work of art stamp set in the background of this one, and I'm gonna do something a little different with this piece. I'm just gonna bring in a little scrap here, and I think I'm gonna choose the Pacific Point, and then I'm gonna use this image from the lovely inside and out stamp set. This image matches the image that's embossed with the sweetheart folder. I'm just gonna stamp this around in the background. And I just wanna make sure I'm catching all the edges here so that I don't see any blank white space once I get this on the back, because I don't know how much I'm gonna need here, right? Okay, so this should do it. I know somebody's gonna ask me, where did I get these sprinkles from? These are cake sprinkles or cupcake sprinkles, and I believe that I bought them at Walmart back in like January for some great idea I had that never materialized. So you're gonna very carefully pour these in here. And I wanna tell you that I think I got way too many sprinkles in this card, way too many. So I'm gonna use a lot less here. And then I'm gonna take my piece and I am going to cover this up. The one last thing I wanna tell you, these Foam adhesive strips are slightly thicker than dimensionals. So when I have some blank space down here that I need to pop up, instead of putting dimensionals on it, I just put a little bit of foam adhesive tape here. And here's my glue. I'm going to add glue to this background piece. This is the next layer on my card. Oh, Peel off the backings here. I've done that before too. Where I'm like, how come that isn't sticking? Well, oh yes, I love this. And you're gonna get this centered on here. Okay, there we go. Let's all push down. There's our fun little shaker. And then we're gonna bring in the happy birthday thinlet and we are going to die cut that. I'll be right back. And here this comes. This is like the funnest little thinlet. I love what this adds to your cards. All these pieces. I could use my Big Shot Dye brush, but I'm kind of in a hurry and I'm being lazy, so I'm not getting it out. But if I was to do many of these, I certainly would. Okay, and just give it a few pokes on the edges of the words to get these started. And be gentle, this is very delicate. I haven't ripped one yet, but okay. 
And we've got just a couple more pieces here. And I think I have them all. Get that out of the way. Now, how did I glue this on here? Well, I thought about using mini glue dots and gluing it right to the um, acetate. We also have some adhesive sheets that I could have used, but I didn't think of it in time. So what I did is I kind of laid it on here and I looked to see what's gonna be hanging over the edges. This, 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 and this. And I just added a little bit of liquid glue to those areas and not quite that much. That was just a bit much, so I just kind of wiped it off there. I could use my sponge too if I wanted to. There's lots of different ways. You'll figure this out. But I am just going to adhere this right to that card front. Here's my card base. This is Pacific Point. I've got Elegant Eggplant, Lemon Lime, Pacific Point. And then I also used a little bit of this finely woven Lemon Lime Twist Ribbon. Because why? Because it matches and it's perfect. And again, yay Stampin' Up! for giving me all the tools to make my creativity much easier. And I'm just going to tie this in a loose knot. And that's going to bring my whole card together. I love, love, love these vibrant colors. I think Lemon Lime Twist is like my favorite new color. Oh, I have to show you. This is the shirt I'm wearing today. And it has some Lemon Lime Twist in it. Ah, love it. Okay, here we are. Other than the inside, our card is completed. We've got two shaker cards here. One where we personalized it. Put a little number seven in there so you can go around images and then one where we just use a circle cut out of the front of our cardstock what do you think do you like it with less of the little shaker things in it or do you like it with more let me show you the inside of this one ah, i stamped some of those polka dots or little slash marks right here on a balloon and use my marker to do that and then i also put some down here so our inside looks just as spectacular almost as our outside. I hope you will stop back next Wednesday where I will be demonstrating using the window sheets in a whole different way. I can't wait to go through this series with you. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would sure appreciate your orders. I'd love to earn your business. You can pop on over to my blog, www.astampabove.com. You can also check out my blog for all the measurements and details that go with these cards. You'll be able to find all that and also ordering links. If you need to order any of these supplies, you'll be able to click right on the picture of the product and it'll take you right to my Stampin' Up! store. Make sure you click down here in the bottom corner to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you won't miss anything. Thanks a lot for stamping with me today. I'm glad you could come along for the ride. Have a great day. Bye-bye.